Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, today we're gonna talk about uh, Ran, which is I guess is a weird name to me. I don't know for some reason. Um, yeah, I don't know. It couldn't have been like Ran or something like that. It had to be Ran. But anyway, uh, that aside. Um, yeah, I, I've already seen his kit, so um, it's not gonna be the first time going through, kind of talking about it. Um, yeah, I got off work yesterday, and I was just like, oh, let me, you know, everybody kept talking around, and, and I really couldn't wait, and I was just like, let me just get in there. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, here's here's Ran. We're gonna take a look at what, what his skills do and, and and see what's up with him. Uh, we can skip all this, so we can get to his stats. So I'm probably not gonna say much that other people haven't already said. <laughs> Um, because there's a lot of stuff with him that's kind of obvious. Uh, so first of all, you know, again, the same thing everyone else has said is he's got the highest base speed in the game, uh, which is fine. Um, he's got attack imprint, which is better. So when it comes to crit chance, a lot of times, um, it's good cause it helps you like reallocate other stats. Uh, but when you want more damage, you want the attack imprint, right? So a cleaver wants attack imprint. Um, because getting 100% crit chance isn't that big a deal. It's that big a deal when you have to get every other stat. But with a unit like this, you only really need attack and speed, right? Um, so the more attack you have, the thing with the thing with crit chance is there's a cap. So like, um, you can reach the cap of crit chance, and crit chance helps you get there. But because, again, it it doesn't necessarily contradict some of the other stuff I've said. But like, the fact that like attack, you, like attack is infinite, right? Well, not infinite, right? There's a cap somewhere, but we don't really, you know. It's not like a hard cap, um, but attack basically you just want to get it higher. Like, wh how much attack do you want? As much as you can, right? So getting higher and closer to that on a cleave unit and a high damaging unit is kind of what you want. Uh, so the fact he has attack is pretty good. Um, again, either way, attack or crit chance would have been fine. Um, just the fact that it's attack is, is it's great because it just gives him more damage to play with, and you know, yeah. So. Um, going forward from there, obviously, like I said, he has the highest base speed in the game, which basically means that um, he can outspeed things like Cerise, any any uh, debuffer. So basically, like he's kind of a, he's kind of a solution to New Angie and a bunch of other units, kind of like that that people are getting kind of annoyed about. But like the problem being that like yeah, it's like how do we counter New Angie? We'll just outspeed her and then just wipe her off the field, right? Kind of uh, reminiscent of for anyone who plays a. Uh, uh, Pokemon or anything like that. Uh, Darkrai was, you can kind of think of New Angie as Darkrai. It's just like a first turn CC unit and then, you know, whatever. But if you can outspeed them and then just hit them with like a punch or something like that, they'll just usually die. Um, Darkrai specifically because he's dark and uh, you can just hit him with a fighting move. But in this case, you know, just, you know, have a higher base speed unit, cleave them, and then, you know, move on with your life. Um, one of the things that I find kind of interesting is that like he doesn't present a new solution. Like a lot of people are kind of like, oh, what, you know, what are they gonna sell us to 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 beat Angie, and and all these other units and stuff like that? But like, he's not doing anything that any unit hasn't already done, right? He's just a faster unit. Like, you have to outspeed basically, and you know, we've all already known that. It's like, how do you beat a unit? You just outspeed him, and and he's basically the the you know, the next level of that. So, um, I think it's fine. Um, the biggest problem we'll see in a little bit here, but yeah. <laughs> So the biggest problem is this S2. Uh, this S2 basically, so you you can look at it and say, oh, he has attack, he has increased attack, which is already bad enough, because now he's gonna hit as hard as, um, like imagine trying, like, because before the, mo the most speed contesters we had were things like Acid, things like, um, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, things like Acid, things like uh, Blue Kisei, things like, um, what's her name? Uh, a Kali, <clears throat> just high speed units like that. Like we had them go first, and then they only had one skill usually, right? It was always single target. So if you had something like um, Acid, he was gonna try to nuke someone and then drop their souls. So you have someone like A Kali, who's basically just 100% there just to nuke someone. Um, things like Kisei trying to reset someone. So all of those have a single target, so there's a drawback. But the thing with Ran is you can potentially just be strong enough to be like, if he goes first, he just wipes the whole team. Cause he's going to hit probably as hard or if not harder. I mean, his base stats are his, I think his attack stats a little lower. Ooh, well, let's not go back there. I don't know if I was looking for it. His base stats going to be a little lower than RB's attack stat, I think. Uh, but the fact that he gives himself free attack buff and, um, I, you know, we already know 
uh, how ridiculous uh, Gab is on RB. Now imagine this guy who has two chances to proc it. Uh, so there's a 40% chance the first time when he activates the skill, because he gives himself attack buff, if he triggers it on if he triggers it on his first turn, which is when he activates this, he'll turn that Gab into a two turn Gab. So there's a 40% chance of that happening. But because he takes a second turn, and now that he's about to S3, he's got an attack buff, which will transform into a Gab. <laughs> Uh, which you know it's a gap because of the alexis basket um yeah so you basically have two chances to trigger it basically coming out to be almost 80 percent chance to have you know gab activate not only that have it for two turns either way um is that that doesn't necessarily broken because it's not necessarily 80 percent chance it's it's lower because they're non-linked um right like there's there's a chance to get to fail both, right? Where, again, if we go back to the coin flip, 50 for one side, 50 for the other side, you add them up, it comes to 100. So to have or heads or tails, it's 100% chance of either, right? Uh, but here, you can actually just get neither and or whatever. They're not linked. So it's somewhere lower than 80%, um, but it's definitely more than 40, right? Um, and RB already procs a gab all the time. So now imagine that on a blue, you know, on the first unit that goes and he just wipes out your whole team while granting immunity for any follow-ups, right? So the CC units are just going to die. And then anyone else who comes with like just random CC is not going to make it because uh, they're going to have immunity. The immunity is kind of weird. Um, it, it felt it feels kind of tacked on, like they just threw it on him just to... Uh, yeah, it feels like they threw it on him just to have the skill do something other than give him attack buff. Because right now all this matters is attack buff and extra turn, and that's already broken. The fact that he gives immunity is fine. I'm not saying it's like you should take it off or anything like that. I'm just saying it's tacked on is all is all I'm saying. Um, a cleave, an opening cleave unit, like his job should be to open cleave and basically just kill everybody. What is the point of immunity if he's killed everybody, right? Um, that's not always going to, you're not always going to just murder everyone outright like that, like the way you kind of want with him um, because of, you know, defense and all this other stuff. That's not always going to happen. Then you know, might not trigger gab and whatnot. That's not always going to happen. But you have to realize you're picking him for that reason. You're not picking him to like maybe kill one unit and then go forward. Because otherwise, you know, you could just pick Acid or someone better suited to that. Um, and the fact that you give immunity, like I said, it's not bad. It's certainly going to be helpful, especially in RTA. Like, you know, sometimes depending on how the draft goes, maybe you, you wipe out a unit or something and they'll have immunity and the rest of their units are kind of like falling behind or whatever. Um, so it's absolutely not... A bad thing to have the immunity on there it's just tacked on and i feel like it was i don't know they would they might have been debating another another skill to put on him because i feel like this unit specifically because he has attack imprint um i feel like they could have just given him the crit chance buff oh, pardon i feel like they could have just given him the grit chance buff and the attack buff and then there you go now granted that does seem kind of strong uh because now you only have to build he's got 23 percent built in Plus that is already 70. You only have to build like 30% crit chance on a unit that is just going to gab all the time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's up to it's up to them. And, and I don't know. It just feels like the immunity is just kind of there to be like, well, you can take out new Angie and then any follow-up debuffers that come after her. that like, Because normally you bring like new Angie or you bring somebody like Cerise and then you bring other debuffers after them because they have their own strip. Um, the, the initial... People with the strip are usually too focused on speed to be tanky enough to survive, so they're just gonna die. Now that they're dead, the people that were supposed to do follow-up debuffs, they can't do anything because you have immunity up, right? That's kind of what the immunity is for. It's in, it's you know it's for those other ones because the, the 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 ones that come after Cerises and the ones that come after New Angies and, and whatever that don't have a strip, um, they usually they're not as tanky or they're they're a little more tanky. What I mean to say, they're a little more tanky because they don't have to they don't have your best speed gear and your best speed gear is on the other ones, right? Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, like I said, so the main problem with this, like, it's just the extra turn in the gab, you know. Uh, so let's move forward here. I mean, it looks cool. That's the other thing. Um, you, you trigger Politus, which, like, isn't such a big deal because he just steals that extra turn from his own, like, S2. Um, but it does like kind of mess up some of the other units. Uh, and then finally, so here we are. Um, we tax all the enemies, dispelling two debuffs, 
two buffs before 80% chance to inflict stigma. So he not only is he going to be a huge nuker, um, he's also going to inflict uh, debuffs, right? So it's like, basically, and a lot of people are like, oh, Cleave is back now. Um, I'm not I'm not 100% convinced, but this is making the strongest argument, right? Um, so because of him, not only is he just going to kill everybody, anyone he doesn't kill is going to have stigma, which means they can't heal, and they can't, their combat readiness increase, yeah, they, they're losing 50% of whatever combat readiness increase you have implemented on your team. On top of that, there's a chance to get defense broken. Now, granted, some of the tanker units that are going to survive the cleave period are like, they have higher effectiveness. Um, but you can just soul burn, right, and guarantee it. So, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's an interesting um, setup here. It's It's kind of like, I don't know, it feels very lazy in terms of design because it's like, Okay, what, let's just have one unit do everything we need it to do in the kit, right? So one of the things where Cleave existed before where it was like, you had to bring a, um, you had to bring a stripper, and then you had to bring a, a defense breaker, and then you had to bring a CR pusher, and you had to bring an attack buffer or something like that. But now Ran just comes out and they're like, okay, he's got a built-in attack buff, he's got a built-in immunity for whatever reason. Um, he's got a built-in strip, he's got a built-in stigma, he's got a built-in, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, he's got a built-in defense break, um, he grants himself skill nullifier, and he gives, um, he has speed-based damage, and he's got a soul burn that ignores effect resistance, right? So, I don't know, I mean, it's just like, it's just weird. It's just lazy to me. Um, I know people are going to be excited for this because Cleave has been dead. It's not been dead for a while because um, anyone who's actually played RTA knows that Cleave is still pretty strong. Um, and even Legend player, Legend RTA players get cleaved by other Legend RTA players. Um, so Cleave has never been dead and it's never going to be dead. Um, but it's just the people complaining mainly is the problem. Um, but yeah, so they kind of... I, f I feel like this is a bit of an overcorrection. Um, he might not do enough damage to just like one shot the whole team by himself, but then you just bring a few follow-ups. Like you bring him and Vildred, I mean, you're basically done, right? Because he kills maybe two people. They're all whatever. Whoever's not dead is probably defense broken, and then Vildred boosts himself up thirty percent because um, two people died because of his S two, and now Vildred has his uh, what's that? Um, the exclusive equipment, right? So now he can do whatever he did before, but better, right? So <clears throat> I don't know. It, it just feels like. I don't know. It just feels lazy to me is, is all I'm going to say. Um, I don't know one really cares about like um, balance or like, I'm not saying he's broken, right? I'm not saying he's going to destroy the game. He's not going to destroy the game. And a lot of people want things that are that strong and they want to overreact so they can get a lot of views. But um, I've never really that kind of person. My concern is usually just how, what goes into the design of these characters and what kind of like, you know, just what kind of stuff is going on here. And my problem isn't that he's very strong. I mean, I'm, I'm glad he exists and, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, I just don't like lazy design units. I don't like units that are like this. I mean, like I said, they just threw everything in there because people have been complaining because of all the stuff that's missing. Um, because Cleave, apparently, I mean, I don't know. I just don't like Cleavers, I guess. It's, it's, maybe that's the other thing. So I guess as a disclaimer, right, um, every time a new Cleave unit's released, I just, I, for one, I don't like Cleavers. Uh, I don't like lazily designed units. Um... And yeah, that's I mean that's basically what this unit is. He's just a lazy cleaver. Um so that that's kind of my thoughts on it. Um then we get to look at the S1 and the S1 is I mean it's fine. Um penetrates defense by 20%, right? It's not bad. It's a pretty good S1. I would have actually this would have been nice to have on something like um strays just have him be like I mean, not have strays be like everything defense pen, but like he, you know, strays's main characteristic is that he defense pens on the s3 and then you know just give them a bit of defense pen on the s2 on the s1 i mean um but yeah i don't know that, that i'm kind of interesting but yeah i mean I, I like the s1 the s1's good and you know he's gonna be strong people are gonna pull for him and you're gonna see him a lot in rta and you're gonna see him a lot just everywhere in general um so yeah uh <clears throat> we can look at the artifact uh the artifact uh 15 attack percent increase this is the other thing that i was mentioning that i, I was I, I mentioned earlier when i was talking about acid and acoli but Acid, his part of his job is to remove the souls. Now you have this artifact that you can put on him if you want to. I mean, you're probably just going to run Gab. But if you want to, you can put this on him. You're losing 25% attack increase off the top end. 
But the 25% isn't going to mean the difference between a tank being dead and not being dead, right? A tank or a healer, they're still going to survive whether you had the gab or the regular attack buff. The the thing with Arby that people don't understand is not the gab that's strong. It's going from 0 to 75%. But because Ran already has 50% attack increase from the base attack buff, going from 50% to 25 there is a bit of a, a loss there. But not to mention... You're not even losing that much because why run Gab for 25% attack increase over the regular standard 50% um, attack increase? When you can run this and now you've got 15%, you're only losing 10% off the Gab. Are you really going to run the Gab for that 10% loss? And you know, you and I both know um, people are going to run the Gab because they don't really know how to calculate things and they don't really care that much. Um, so basically, it's the bottom line comes down to: Are you worth? Is it worth? going for that extra 10% to like do, you know, if you're not going to kill a tank, 10% isn't going to help you, right? That's the bottom line. Uh, but people are still going to run Gab because they're kind of idiots. But anyway, <clears throat> the point being, this is probably what you're going to run on him because now not only does he do everything that Akali did, basically, I mean, Akali still probably has a high, it's like higher single target nuke. So that's, you know, she does what she does. Basically, she he's going to do everything that Acid does. Not only, but not only that, but better because he's one speed faster um two because he's also got just like you know like we looked earlier his s3 has opponent speed scaling right so does what he does he's got the strip and then on top of that now he removes 15 souls from the enemy right so like that's what i'm saying like everything that they built for this guy is just the laziest like let's just take everything everyone does put it in one unit and then we'll see we'll go from there um that's fine but yeah whatever uh it just seems interesting but yeah like i said you probably want to run this on him. Um, this or just something else. Just please don't run Gab. Because if you're running Gab, like if I see, like anyone I see running Gab on this on this person, you, you already know they're, they're probably, you know, well, I don't know. I don't want to say anything, but I don't want to be too offensive or too crass for no reason. But um, yeah, I just, anyone who's going to run Gab on him is just an idiot. Um, because again, like I said, the calculation comes down to you're, you're losing 10%. The reason Arby's so good with it is because he's going from zero to to seventy five percent. Like that that difference is drastically noticeable. Um, but you're not going to notice ten percent extra damage here and there, right? Um, other than that, I'm um, kind of thinking about what other artifacts you can use. You could probably use. He might be able to use RNL. Um, oh yeah, actually, that's a pretty good thing to run on him because like RNL has two chances to pro again has two chances to proc. So you you do the you do the um, what's it called you do the the single turn and then it grants you another turn and then you s3 and then you have two chances you have a chance on the s3 on the s2 and the s3 to trigger the rnl which gives you an, a free s1 somewhere right um but the s1 isn't really that valuable like the thing with biking is you can s2 um into like s1 and then you can s3 and then trigger it again and get s2 again and then get another somewhere in there right so the the, the way her turn system works is like you can get just a bunch of turns in a row um but with him he's not that good because his, his 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 s2 takes too long to come back but you know anyway um what else was there uh obviously dust devil is not really that good on him um oh you know what is pretty decent on him probably um wind rider because he's probably going to kill somebody off the first turn and then now he's hidden um but it's probably not that you're getting diminishing returns because granted you're going to get like a 60 percent attack increase but only on the s1 and like that's not that big a deal uh, but you're getting stealth but he's already got skill nullifier right so you're kind of like double dipping in the survivability for no real reason um but yeah i really i mean i don't really i can't really think of any you any um skill any artifact better for him specifically than this maybe um that green villagers artifact that like does something when you aoe i don't remember what it does exactly uh, it was kind of a waste but um maybe that one would be pretty good but i really do think this is the best one because again you you can just offload so many tasks onto him because of this artifact um now he does acids thing where you can bring in uh, there if they bring belly in against you it's like okay well all my books are dead if i brought books in but if i brought him right I can take souls away from them. And then now you're kind of even. So he brings books and you can counter this. Uh, but yeah, so I guess the main takeaway from this is don't run them on Gab. Don't don't listen to what people are telling you. Um, if, if anyone tells you to run Gab, um, <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, they're kind of an idiot probably. 
Um, but yeah, so I mean, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, what else? Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I think he's he looks pretty cool. Uh, glad to have, you know, a Vildred-related character. I do like Vildred, and I think my favorite thing, I think, is probably, like, if I were to run Cleave, would just to be run him and Vildred, like, like, just show up on the arena, like, you know, who attacked who, right, when you look at your backlogs. Just show up on there and, like, have, like, a clean streak of, like, just him and Vildred together wiping out whole teams. Like, that'd be pretty funny. Um, of course, you'd probably just want to bring a um, a tag of Hells so that you can soul burn to make sure you don't lose 15% every so often. But still, it'd be funny to have, like, a whole page of, like, recently attacked. And, like, they're all just, like, two unit cleaves. <laughs> um but yeah, other than that, I think um, I think for people complaining that Cleave is dead, it's you know it's not gonna it, it was never dead, but it's gonna be stronger now, um, just because you can offload so many tasks onto one unit. Um, granted, usually you want the um, you want the uh, the hundred percent defense break, but like the thing with the hundred percent defense break is because you want to get it with that one Cleave. But the fact that he does so much by himself means you can just run someone else for cleanup, right? Like again, like the Vildred. Um, so if he doesn't defense break somebody i mean he's gonna defense break 50 percent of them half the time so that's two units and they're those guys are just gonna die uh the other half <clears throat> he's probably gonna defense break like the other half the time maybe like yeah so because it's 85 it only goes up to 85 it's not 100 thank goodness right um but yeah 85 percent with a, it ignore soul resistance is, is uh effect resistance is no is no joke <laughs> oh yes yeah, so that's it um probably the next video i'm gonna do is probably summoning for him because like I said, while I don't like him and I don't like um, cleaving or anything, it's just good to have all you know a bunch of the new units and whatnot. So um, that'll probably what I'll be doing in the next video.